Hello everybody, Mike here at Game Scratch. Today we're going to be checking out a program called GIMP, uh, specifically GIMP 2.10 or later. Now this is an open source painting package. It stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program, I believe. I might have screwed that acronym up a bit. And what's kind of funny is if you look at my channel, I've done a lot of content on open source tools. At least half of the stuff on my channel is open source in some form. And I've never covered this program. And it's been around forever. GIMP started life... Uh, oh. Uh, at least over a decade ago, probably well over that, and has been sort of a staple of the open source world, and I've never really covered it on this station. I covered it as part of my free tools roundup last year, and really that's about it. And you may ask why? Well, I don't like GIMP. Or at least I didn't like GIMP, and that's kind of point blank why I never really covered it. It was a pain to use. It had terrible HTTPI support, so it looked awful on my machine. Uh, basically, it was actually unusable on my machine. Uh, it was ugly. Uh, it performed slow. Basically, you name it, there were a lot of flaws with it. So I found, in my example, on a Windows platform, I found I liked Paint.net better in every manner whatsoever. So why am I covering it today? Well, that 2.10 release was pretty massive. Now let's head on over to the GNU, uh, sorry, the GIMP webpage. So as you can see, once again, it's GNU Image Manipulation Program. Uh, it is completely and utterly open source under the GPL license, as you could probably guess by the GNU part of that. It's available on Linux OS X and Windows, and this new release was pretty substantial. Again, why I'm covering it. Now, the nutshell version of what changed in this release is they moved to CEGL, which is a high bit depth processing, multi-threaded hardware accelerated pixel processing library, and that has had a pretty profound effect on the way that filters and shaders work within GIMP, and it's also seemingly improved the performance quite a bit. On top of that, color improvements have happened. Uh, beta support or initial support for high DPI is finally in in there, plus there is now theming support, new brushes, and more. Also new file format support, uh, PSD importing support, which is nice, uh, four colored themes, as I mentioned a second ago. Uh, you can also select different icon sizes, which is important for high DPI support, but also if you have visibility issues or you want to make more space available for you. So basically they just kind of improved the program all around. If you want to get into the full release notes, here they are. And this, again, is six years of work that accumulated in this particular release, and that's why I've decided to focus it here. You can go in here, there's a whole lot more that happened. You can see the new icon sets available there. It's still a little cluttered at times, but as you can see, there are now four levels of resolution available. And tools just seem to work better across the board, improvements in color, etc. So I will link this down below so you can go into the details of what else changed in this release. But there was a ton of fixes. And this now is GIMP. And though the user interface is a whole lot nicer to behold. Things work better, things are smoother. Um, as you can see, the resolution is fine, uh, depending on what resolution you're running at. Now, I dropped down to 1080p to do this video uh, versus 4K, because I found little things still don't work. For example, uh, this cursor display when I hover in between two areas to do a resize is still extremely small. So they're getting there on high DPI and is definitely usable now where it wasn't before, but there are still some flaws in place. Now, probably the coolest new functionality comes from that CEGL library they implemented. So head on over here, you go to tools, oh wait, no, filters, my bad. And then anything you see there with a, uh, a G beside it has been updated to use the new support. And I'll show you here with a Gaussian blur, what you can now do, you see, it is now immediately previewed with preview on, so you can see how your filters are going to apply, like so. So there is no more of this, you know, apply, destructive workflow, ah, crap, undo. It makes the workflow a whole lot faster, especially if you're working on uh, the image, you know, uh, image touch-up side of things, uh, where you're going to be working very heavily with filters. So CEGL was definitely a huge development there. Um, I also showed you again, the high DPI display is much nicer. There's some nice polish across the board. The additional file support, uh, file import save as support is definitely sweet. And then the final thing that I'm gonna showcase in this video is also the new themes. Um, so you can see right now we're in a dark theme. That seems to be what everybody but me likes. Uh, but in this case, there are um, four other themes I will show. You'll see them implement on the fly. So there's also a gray theme like so a light theme, like so, and a system theme, like so. So really depending on what kind of setup you prefer, there is now a lot more flexibility in how the visuals work. Unfortunately, you can't create your own theme, which is a little strange, but um, 
you know, definitely a step in the right direction. We've also again got uh, icon sizes can be changed on the fly, so I could switch out to a large set of icons or a huge set of icons or a tiny, tiny set of icons. And again, this really helps with the high DPI support. So uh, definitely nice progress they've made here. And then there's a whole bunch of little usability tweaks under the you know, under the hood that if you're a daily user, you are going to love with this guy that I'm not going to get into in detail here. First off, because uh, I'm not a daily user and I don't actually need a lot of the power features here. So I'm a bad person for showcasing it. So for the most part, the purpose of this video is if you like me had written off GIMP in the past, I highly recommend you check it out again. A lot of the things that you might have hated before are definitely more usable now. I, I just remember so much frustration before and in the brief time I've played around with it today, I just haven't been experiencing that. So um, if you had the same basic experience when dealing with GIMP, I do recommend you try it out again, especially since this uh, 2.1 uh, release. And you'll actually notice if you go back to the GIMP webpage, they've been um, pretty steadily updating it as it's been. So last week there was actually 2.10.2 uh, was released with additional new features. So it seems like uh, the development speed is ramping up quite a bit here. So um, definitely do be sure to check out GIMP again if you wrote it off in the past or uh, check it out if you're looking for an image manipulation program and you know you're looking for free obviously. Uh, this was always the open source inferior version of Photoshop. Well it just became a whole lot less inferior while still remaining open source. So uh, if you are looking for an image manipulation program GIMP might be the thing for you. Um, and that's it for now. I hope you found that useful and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.